Here's a question one of the engineering 2020 external exam, multiple choice. What is the gear ratio of this worm and wheel? Well, up here is the worm and the other thing is the wheel. Every time we turn the worm 360 degrees or one revolution, that's equal to one tooth being moved. So we know a velocity ratio, which is the same as gear ratio, is equal to teeth on the dry driven over driver, which in this case is one. The gear up down here has 18 teeth, so that's 18. So it's the same as 18 to one, therefore it is C. Question two. A 25 kilo block is pulled up an incline using a force P as shown. What is the minimum value of P required to just move the box from rest if the coefficient of static friction is 0.4? Okay, first of all, let's draw a free body diagram. So this will be the X component of force due to gravity. Yeah, P is the direction of motion, so FF is opposite to that. The Y component, which is perpendicular to the plane, is FGY. And the F normal is that. So from, from this diagram, you can see that Fn is equal to FGY in magnitude. So Fn is equal to FGY. And that is equal to mass times gravity times the angle, the cos of the angle. So we substitute our values, so 25 times 9.8 times cos 25, that will be equal to 222, 222 newtons. Now we know that we're given coefficient of static friction, so we can use this formula. So coefficient of static friction is equal to force due to friction divided by force normal. So in our known, so 0.4 is equal to FF over 222. So FF is equal to 88.8 newtons. Okay, so now we need to find P. So I'll set up this equation. F net is equal to MA, where up the hill is positive. So if you look here, there's three forces that are parallel to the plane, P, FGX, and FF. So you said up the hill is positive, so P's, P will be positive, FGX will be negative, and FF will be negative. And because it's still at rest, it will have no acceleration. So it will become like this. Eighty-eight point eight minus mass, which is 25, times gravity, 9.8, times the sine of the angle, sine 25 is equal to zero. And when you bring it all to one side and calculate it, it will be 192.3 newtons. And the closest option is A, exactly 192.3. Next question. What is the hypoeutectoid formation indicated by the arrow in this carbon steel microstructure? As you can see, it points to here, and it's like stacked layers of stuff. And the definition of, definition of perlite is lamel, lamellar layers of cementite and ferrite. Therefore, it's B, perlite. Question four. High voltage transmission cable insulation would most likely be manufactured from polyethylene. Here's why it's not the other ones. Polyvinyl chloride is also used for cable insulation, but it's only meant for low to medium voltage applications. Also for B, it is a hard material, and D, it's easier to break. So therefore, that leaves C. Question 5. A screw conveyor is used to transport grain from an input chute up a 10 degree slope to a holding bin using the specs shown. What is the volume of grain moved each minute? So this is a kind of an unfamiliar question, so 
let's apply a process of elimination using logic. So the capacity moved per individual screw as 0.15 meter cubed and the conveyor RPM is 10. That means every minute it will be moving 0.15 times 10 per screw, so 1.5. But that would be only if the entire machine had one screw in order to move 1.5 every minute. So it can't be D and it can't be C because that's too small. It's going to have more than one screw. Now that leaves us with A and B. For 225 meter cubed of volume being moved each minute, if we calculate that, so 225 divided by 1.5, that tells us this machine has 150 screws. Now considering the screw length is 2400 millimeters, if we divide that by 150, that tells us, well, there's a distance of 16 millimeters per screw. Now, if you think about the purpose of this machine, it's used to transport grain. And 1.6 centimeters is too small for grain to get in easily. And if you imagine, producing that would be acquiring very fine, precise machinery, which, which would make it very expensive. So it's unreasonable to be A. Therefore, that leaves us with B. Question six. An irrigation system uses a 7,450 watt electric motor to drive a pump that delivers 10,000 liters of water per hour over a distance of 100 meters. How efficient is the irrigation system? Assume it has no friction and that one liter of water is one kilogram. So since we're given power, which is this, we're given a mass which you can convert to force and we're given a distance and we're told efficiency. Those are the key terms. So efficiency, is generally output divided by input. And using the other variables we know, there are two formula, formulas that stand out in the formula sheet, which is work is equal to force times distance and power is equal to work over time. If you substitute, substitute each of these into each other, that gives you power is equal to force distance over time. We will substitute what we know now, so 7450 is equal to 10,000 times 9.8 to convert it into a force times 100 meters, that's the distance it has to travel, over T, the unknown. That will give us 1,315 seconds, and if we divide that by 60 squared to convert it to hours, that gives us 0.365 hours. So we know that in one hour, there's just one. And it tells us that this entire system, when you consider these variables, it will move 10,000 liters of water, water per hour. But our calculation tells us it should be taking 0.365 hours, so approximately a third. So if we do our efficiency calculation, that's 0.365 over 1 times 100. And that gives us 36.5%, which is closest to B. Question 7. A 20 kilogram box sits just on the point of sliding on an inclined plane. If the coefficient of static friction is 0.27, what is the angle of repose? Now on the formula sheet, there's a really simple formula, which is coefficient of static friction is equal to tan theta, where theta is the angle of the inclined plane. So we substitute what we know, to tan theta. So theta is equal to tan inverse or octan of 0.27. That gives us 15.1 degrees. 15.1 degrees as closest to C. Question 8. The truth table that corresponds to this logic gate is... This type of truth gate is an exclusive OR. Now let's draw it with the correct format. This will be our P, this will be our Q, and this will be our F. So the possible combinations are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. In a normal OR gate, it would be this would be a 1, this would be a 1, this top one would be a 0, and this bottom one would be a 1. But it tells us it's exclusive. So the way I like to remember it is that it's exclusively all, so it can't be the same. 
Same so therefore zero, the zero. same ones are just zero, 0 The one that matches to this the one that collection is A. Question 9. A bicycle has gearing with a velocity ratio of 1 to 3. The rear tire has an outside diameter of 740 millimeters. What is the distance traveled for every three rotation of the foot pedal? Okay, so let's draw this back tire and the diameter. So it a velocity ratio of 1 to 3. So that means every time the foot pedal is rotated once, the back tire will rotate three times. Keep that in mind. So first let's calculate the circumference of the rear tire to calculate how far it will travel every time the rear tire turns once. So c is equal to pi times diameter which is 0.74. That's equal to 2.32. Now we know that our velocity ratio is 1 to 3, and this 2.32 meters is for every time the back tire is turned once. But we know with one rotation of the foot pedal, it will turn, turn 3 times. Multiply that by 3. That's equal to 6.97. But we're told the foot pedal is rotated 3 times. So times that by 3 again. And that's approximately 21 meters, which is B. Question 10. The key feature indicated by the arrow in this mild steel stress strain diagram is D. I'll explain why it's not the other options. So the Young's modulus refers to this linear region down here. But that's not what's being pointed to, so it's not that. So it's this turning point of this parabola up here. The ultimate tensile stress is the highest possible stress. So the plastic limit is the point after the proportionality has been breached, and the upper limit would be when it breaks. So it's not those ones. Therefore, that leaves us with D.